This was a story about an indigenous community in northwestern Ontario that for decades has been affected by mercury poisoning from industry. Lots of media back in the 1970s had, had reported on how uh, this old paper mill had just dumped mercury right into the Wabagoon River and that flowed downstream towards Grassy Narrows and a, a neighboring indigenous community. And that mercury poisoned the fish, which worked its way up the food chain and, and sickened the people. Over the years, a government official after government official has said, essentially, there's nothing to see here, folks. That the river will eventually clean up itself and the people are doing okay now. But all that time, the people of Grassy Narrows have been telling a different story. Many generations of people in the community, including the younger generations, have telltale signs of mercury poisoning. So their hands shake, or they have problems feeling the tips of their fingers. They have memory problems. Children have learning disabilities. And so the people of Grassy Narrows have repeatedly said the river that is essentially their lifeblood is still contaminated with mercury. My name is David Bruiser and I am a reporter and editor on the investigations team at the Toronto Star. Over a two-year period, I worked on this story about the mercury poisoning of Grassy Narrows First Nation with my colleague Jamie Poisson. We came to Grassy Narrows in 2016 by way of a tip. A man named Cass Glowacki had emailed the leaders of Grassy Narrows and he had told them that he was part of a crew that haphazardly dumped a bunch of drums filled with salt and mercury in a pit behind an old mill upstream from their community. He said that he was writing them now because he was guilt-ridden and all these years later he wanted to make it right. I wasn't sure what to think when we got the email. Um, of course it, it could be fake or it could be a genuine email written by someone who did not remember what happened all those years ago. But he wasn't responding to the emails that we were sending him and so my colleague David Bruiser and I set out to find Mr. Glowacki. It was really important to us to find Kaz Glowacki and not just rely on this email he had written because it would give us an opportunity to meet him in person, lay eyes on him, test his story, ask him questions, get uh, our own sense of his credibility and see whether or not his story was consistent and that what he told us was similar to the details in the email. So finding Kazbolaki was not that easy, but it came down to what we call in this business shoe leather reporting. We tried online listings, phone books, whatever we had at our disposal to cold call any Glowacki we could across the country. We eventually tracked him down in Alberta, but we didn't know exactly where he was. We traced him to one small town near Edmonton. We went to grocery stores, pharmacies, co-ops, convinced people to look in their computer systems to see if a Glowacki was a recent client, chasing his ghost across the province of Alberta, going town to town to town. We talked to his former neighbors, we talked to bar owners and ice cream truck drivers, and eventually we were able to track Mr. Glowacki down just a little bit outside of Calgary. We ended up in Medicine Hat the next day to get him talking to us and, importantly, to get him on camera. And the reason why that's important is if someone agrees to have their picture taken in a case like this, it's another step that he's taking that he's getting behind the words that he's telling us and he's owning them. The story Mr. Glowacki told us is that a few decades ago he was part of a small crew who were tasked with filling barrels full of salt and mercury. And then he said that they lined this pit with plastic and rolled the drums into the pit and lightly covered it up with swale. And so he was concerned that maybe what he had done all those years ago could have been the source of the ongoing mercury contamination, which was poisoning the fish in the river and inevitably poisoning the people of Grass Narrows. The story about Kaz Glowacki and this alleged mercury dump kicked off two years of reporting and 30 plus stories and it allowed us to get closer to solving a riddle that has been afflicting in the people of Grassy Narrows for quite some time. A highlight for me and my colleague Jamie is we also did a story about mercury in the soil and that was a, a, an adventure. 
we decided to travel to Dryden, Ontario, which is the site of where the old mill is, which is just upstream from Grassy Narrow, to test the soil around where Mr. Glocky said he buried the barrels and also near the site of the old mill. We went out to the area that Kasglowacki had circled on a map, and though we had reason to believe that the land was likely owned by the company, we thought it was a justifiable um, chance to take to go and dig some holes because we believed it was in the public interest. So we actually ended up sneaking onto the property of the mill, which is now owned by a different company, and we dug a bunch of holes. We took samples of dirt, we put them in Ziploc bags. We then put those Ziploc bags in a plastic container and flew them back to Toronto. And then we took those Ziploc bags full of soil samples to a lab in London, Ontario. The results came back from the lab test and they basically showed that in some of the holes where we dug the soil from, the mercury levels were 80 times what they ought to have been in that part of Ontario. So you can see when you put the metal detector in the hole, the reading increases. While we were doing all these stories, it wasn't clear that the government knew that there was ongoing mercury contamination. And it was only later in our reporting that we found out uh, that, in fact, in 1990, the government was made aware. What I still have a hard time wrapping my head around is why the government ignored this for so long. I think we need to ask ourselves the question, w would we have allowed this to happen? In Toronto or Arkham or, you know, Ottawa, would we, would we have allowed this to happen? And, uh, you know, I, I think it says a lot about our relationship with Indigenous people. One of the things that we benefited throughout this process was the help, wisdom, contacts from the people of Grassy Narrows who throughout all of this time had been advocating, putting pressure on lawmakers. The people of Grassy Narrows are the ones who really brought the story to light. And we are just very grateful to have had the privilege to tell their stories. That said, I think that there was something about these articles repeatedly on the front page of Canada's largest newspaper, I think was putting pressure on those lawmakers and was putting pressure on the environment minister. I have to give the Toronto Star a lot of credit for continuing to report on this issue and for continuing to put this issue on the front of its website and in the front page of its paper because we believe that it was important. I think that that played a role in pressuring the government to act. This pressure kept building and eventually the environment minister of the time announced that the province was in fact going to commit $85 million to help clean up the river system. And then after that, the federal government um, said that they would commit $5 million to help build a, a care home in Grassy Narrows First Nation, which would give health and wellness services to some people who were among the most sick from mercury poisoning. So the government has earmarked the money and the money has been put in a trust, but nothing has actually happened yet. You know, there has been no moves to start cleaning the river. Uh, there's a team of scientists that say it can be done and they know how to do it, but, but there are no, you know, shovels in the ground yet. I think this is probably the beginning of another phase for the people of Grassy Narrows. They have a lot of questions that are still unanswered, and until they feel like they have the answers to those questions, I think the people of Grassy Narrows are a long way away from feeling like this is over. Mm -hmm.